You might think that with four heat pipes and an otherwise unassuming appearance here that this is just like any other basic tower cooler, but don't let it fool you. This thing is incredible. Welcome to Machines and More. So we got a new CPU cooler today from Arctic. This is the Freezer 36, so let's take a quick look here right now. Big thanks to Arctic for providing us a test sample, but I am not paid by them for this review, and you can expect fair and well-researched content for all the reviews on this channel. So the Arctic P12 has been a popular aftermarket fan upgrade. It's also a very cost-effective fan in general. So up until now in their current lineup, Arctic surprisingly doesn't have a cooler that features just the standard P12 fan. For example, they've got the A35, which uses a P fan, but it lives in a proprietary shroud. You also have the Freezer 34. We've also reviewed that on this channel. And that one uses the Bionics P fan, which is similar, but it's a different RPM range. It's, it's just not a stock P12 fan. It's interesting because we just looked at the new Liquid Freezer 3 240 AIO, which uses two stock P12 fans. And now today we get the air cooler equivalent, which is the Freezer 36. And that basically comes with two stock P12s and push pull. This is a black version. The heatsink is covered in a matte black finish. And these are copper heat pipes, the four copper heat pipes at the bottom. And these are gonna be bare copper in the standard version of the cooler. They're black here. Uh, either way, they directly contact the CPU heat spreader. The heat pipes are exposed at the cold plate. And this one comes with their latest MX6 thermal paste. Curiously, and they've done this with very little negative impact with some of their other coolers, the contact patch here, it's quite small and it only covers a portion of the AM4 IHS. It's even smaller than the AM5 IHS, and this would only uh, cover the center of the rectangular LGA 1700 IHS. So on that note, like the Liquid Freezer 3, there just isn't any more support for the older Intel sockets, uh, just LGA 1700 and the upcoming LGA 1851. Those will mount similarly to the LF3, where you remove the retention mechanism for the CPU and you just attach the included retention frame. For AM4 and AM5, you have a non-offset mounting bars, meaning they line up to the center of the IHS. And this will replace the stock motherboard cooler mounts and you just screw in the cooler uh, to these bars. But you'll see here, all right? Just mock it up real quick and show you here, the cold plate doesn't fully cover even the AM5 IHS, okay? A little odd, but it works. You have aluminum heat fins. They are sculpted sharp uh, to maximize the efficiency of the heat exchange. And my favorite aspect of this new cooler is how the fans mount. It looks kind of odd because you have screws pre-mounted in the fan and you wonder, well, what are these doing here, right? It, that's it. I mean, there's no clips, no screwing anything in. These screw heads, they pop directly into the heatsink and these plastic clips. Right? If you want to flip the airflow direction, that's totally fine. You just, you know, pop the fan off and then uh, flip the direction, right? You, and put the other fan on the other side so it's a push pull, right? So it's very elegant. Now, if there's one potential downside of this design is that you can't then shift the fan up if you somehow have RAM interference. That's unlikely to happen though, because even with an ITX board with a tight layout, like, such as the ASUS X570i that I tested with, the outer edge of the fan is basically flush with the first RAM stick, right? So unless you have RAM with a huge, meaning wide heat spreader that also happens to be, you know, tall on a mini ITX board, then maybe you'll have an issue, but practically speaking, RAM height is not usually gonna be a factor with this cooler. The P12s are are, you know, equipped with the power sharing technology, which is just fancy speak for, you know, it's a daisy chainable cable. Uh, either way, there's no need for a splitter. You just plug it into your motherboard's header and then connect the other one to it. So they will be running at the same RPM more or less as this is a true push-pull setup. Interestingly, and I was a little bit concerned about this at first because I tested the NR200. This one's 159 millimeters tall. I validated that, but it somehow fits in the NR200 on spec, it's 0.5 millimeters taller than the Knockout U12A that I usually have in there. And that one is a tighter fit somehow. 
but this one does touch the side panel. You can tell there's a hint of a bulge at the panel, but it's really nothing noticeable. It's a lot better fit than the usual vein. Of course, there's no guarantees there. I am testing with the ASUS XO70i, so if you use a different board or a different platform, or you know, case to case variants, it may not fit. But if you are thinking of building with the NR200 and this cooler, that's a very, very, very worthwhile shot because it works incredibly. Testing here with the 5800X, this is really, 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 really good performance from the single tower cooler. I mean, the D12L, the size Fuma, these are all dual towers with more heat pipes and they're pretty well regarded ones at that. Fancier, they do max out at 1800 RPM and they, this is still a top tier performer at this level. Now, since the LF3 also uses these two fans, it gives us an interesting comparison to see how much more efficient a radiator is. And of course, liquid cooling is more efficient. The same RPM, there really isn't a contest there, but you know, food for that. So this really would also be great for a noise optimized setup with a lower TDB chip. I've been playing with the Ryzen 5 7600 lately for an upcoming build video. So I also tested that CPU. Even though the cooler's cold plate contact patch is a bit smaller than the AM5 IHS like we discussed, it still works absolutely fine. And with a slight old core OC of 5.4 gigahertz on 1.25 volts, which equates to about 100 watts PPT, yeah, no problems here. It's able to keep it at a manageable temp, even with a fan speed of about 1470 RPM. So one thing I did want to note, the P12s are known for having a weird sound pattern at certain RPM intervals. I won't rehash the sound samples here, so please check out the LF3, which I did recently. That review has sound samples for these fans, just to get an idea. It's not terrible though. So overall, this is a pretty incredible cooler and suited for most gaming builds. If you do plan on doing some heavier multi-thread stuff often, I would tend to limit my recommendations for an air cooler like this to something like an i7 or a Ryzen 7 level of CPU. Pricing. In the long run, for the black one like I have here, Arctic is quoting an MSRP of $52 US, uh, with the most basic one coming in at $46 US. And there will also be an ARGB black or white version for $59 or $60 respectively. So this one, it's on par with coolers like the Fuma, which is usually around $50, but as part of their limited time 23rd anniversary promotion, and I couldn't believe the pricing when I saw it, this black one will only be $28 and the basic model will be $25. So $25 getting you in the door for this level of performance, you know, with a single tower, that is crazy talk. So if you happen to be considering a single tower or just looking for an upgrade now, it actually seems like the perfect time to grab one of these. Um, so I'll leave links down below. I hope this info, this review is helpful to you. If so please give a like and subscribe because it really helps with the traction of these videos. And a big thanks for watching today.